Ladies and gentlemen, I was recently invited to San Francisco by Intel to attend not just GDC 2019, but also the company's Odyssey event. Odyssey event was a celebration of the company's journey into the world of discrete graphics. GDC 2019 was a whirlwind. It marked the first time I'd ever attended GDC, and it was a huge event. Over 29,000 people attended. It was quite the experience, but Odyssey was far from a small event as well. There was around a thousand people there, including journalists, people from the industry, and just tech enthusiasts. Now before we proceed, I do want to make it abundantly clear. Intel paid for my accommodation, and they also paid for my flight to uh, California slash San Francisco. But with that said, all opinions are my own. Intel are actually actively encouraging people to be as honest as possible because they feel that without honesty, they cannot make their products better. So to that end, I'm making this video where I discuss the positives and negatives of Odyssey and my hopes for Intel's graphics. The event itself was not heavily structured, and indeed people were free to be themselves. It was actively encouraged, in fact, for people to be as honest and natural on stage as possible. I have to admit, going into the event, I was a little worried that we might see a cringe fest, very much like Ubisoft or Electronic Arts at the E3 presentations, but no, this was not the case. Instead, people were just honest, natural, and I think that really came across. Hopefully, more companies will take a leaf out of Intel's book here. I will also admit that I was incredibly surprised that I was invited to the Odyssey event. After all, it's not like this channel has like a million subscribers, right? So how did that come to be? Because I think that that's important for you to know. Well, it was a series of strange events, as things tend to be. Recently, I put out a video detailing what I thought Intel had to do to be competitive in the world of discrete graphics. And then, well, you guys actually took things out of my hands. You actually tweeted Intel's official graphics account on Twitter. And, well, it turns out that Amy Barton, who is head of their social media, happened to spot the video. She watched it and then sent it to several others in, the, in her division, and they all really liked it. So I got an email from uh, Amy asking, hey, are you going to be at GDC 2019? And I responded, no, I had no tickets bought, no hotel plans or anything like that. So then I obviously go to bed because, you know, seven hours time zone difference or eight hours, depending on daylight savings and all of that jazz. And um, yeah, she had emailed me back in the morning. And I've got to admit, it's quite early. I am basically useless in the morning without several coffees in me. And I was reading her email and I reread it and I reread it again. And then I send it to several friends because I'm almost positive that I'm misreading what she's telling me because she's asking, hey, crazy idea. Would you be up for going to uh, the Odyssey event and GDC 2019 if we pay for it? No, I wasn't misreading it. She really did ask that. With that said, though, the event was pretty self-contained. I was somewhat surprised that there wasn't a greater emphasis put on, for example, live streaming. Instead, this was clearly a test event from Intel. They wanted to know exactly how the industry would react and what opinions people would have during the event. In actuality, even after the event finished, I was quickly contacted by numerous folks over at Intel, asking my opinions of the event, but not in like a nudging way. They instead said, hey, what did you think? And more importantly, where did we go wrong? What would you like to see improved? Where did you think that uh, you were unhappy? It was clear that this was Intel just testing the waters and trying to figure out how to engage best with the community. Indeed, from my understanding, the event was originally planned to be much smaller. But the CEO of Intel, Bob Swan, apparently got on board. And as budgets increased, the extravagance of the event also did as well. Now understand that this event was not an event where Intel were giving great uh, details of the architecture. We did not learn that it's a 500 teraflop device with two terabytes of RAM, and yes, in case you can't tell, I'm kind of kidding those specs. Instead, it was an event where Intel were trying to push the fact that they were not just synonymous with producing CPUs. 
Instead, they wanted to drive home the message that Intel equals gaming, which is definitely something that is going to be difficult for them to put across. From my perspective, I'm a tech fan. I own Nvidia hardware, AMD hardware, and Intel hardware. Back in the day, I was a huge fan of 3DFX, and their graphics cards are what really got me into technology. But it's hard to argue that there has been an issue over the past couple of years. For one, GPU prices are doing that. We only have two players in the GPU space, which is just not good for competition. It means that if Nvidia are on top and AMD are on the back foot, then really the only choice right now, for example, is to say, hey, buy a GTX 1660 Ti, or hey, buy an RTX 2060, or what have you. And that's just not good for customers. And getting back to the pricing side of things as well, we've had rising GPU prices. And, well, I'm going to put things in a very complex way here. It's not good. <laughs> um, asking people to stump up more and more cash for impressive 1440p or above results is just not great when in 2020 we're going to see the launch of next generation consoles. However, Intel have definitely had a PR issue for a number of years, and clearly the company are doing the best they can to address those issues. The general feeling of speaking up folks at Intel, along with just the industry at large, I personally believe that Bob taking over as CEO of Intel was probably about the best thing that's ever happened to the company, certainly in the last you know decade or so, because it's clear that when he took over, the direction of Intel started to shift immeasurably. So we find ourselves then in a rather strange transition period with Intel. The eight core ninth generation processors from the company, the 9900K, is an impressive beast of a processor. It's very expensive, but it also is the best gaming processor that you can get your hands on right now. AMD are going to be countering with Matisse. At the CES 2019 event, after all, we saw a eight core Matisse part about on par, slightly faster than the 9900K, but with lower power consumption. Unfortunately for Intel though, well, we all know that AMD are not going to be stopping at 8 cores. Intel will be countering with a 10-core Comet Link, and honestly the jury's out on which of those processors performs better, AMD's higher-end Matisse parts or the 10-core Comet Lake, and certainly we have no information regarding the pricing officially from either company, but the delays of 10NM for Intel was not a good thing, and it has allowed AMD to really push forward in terms of the CPU market space. So we're in this strange position now, where the GPU division of Intel clearly is the guiding compass that the rest of the company are trying to follow. Just speaking to the folks in the GPU division, and it's clear that their decision making process is very different. They're trying to engage with the community, and they're trying to get as much goodwill as possible, which is only a good thing, obviously, for us as customers. It also means that the company have made a rather large amount of decisions which help to embrace the developer community as well, including GPU performance profilers, which are now free, a much more engaged social media, optimizations for Unreal Engine and other games, new drivers, and so much more. Okay, so what about the Odyssey event itself? Well, honestly, it was a organized chaos, by which I mean that everyone was free to just speak amongst themselves for the first couple of hours. I have to admit, I was a little nervous going in, and I wasn't really sure how Intel and the community of uh, their partners would actually respond to me being there. I figured me being a smaller YouTuber, Plus, well, being from the UK and not having been to one of these events before, I didn't really think that I was going to get much more than perhaps a small conversation from some of their higher-ups. But no, that's not what happened at all. I was speaking to Jim Keller for a while, and not about tech stuff either. He and I were actually talking about fitness and lifting. I was speaking to Raja Kadori, Chris Hook, Lisa Pierce, as she was telling me what actually drove her to get in to the industry and many others and it was a great experience. I was speaking to some people for 20-30 minutes and it was interesting to hear from them exactly what was the driving force of them getting involved with Intel. Intel's keenness to embrace the community is perhaps best demonstrated by their decision 
to use concept art of Cristiano Sakira. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly, as he is a concept artist and has designed the concept for the Intel graphics, the image that we've been seeing so much recently. But perhaps more interestingly of all of that, they've also asked other people in the community to create concepts of the GPUs as well, which is really awesome, at least in my opinion. As the night continues to rage on and I'm speaking to all of these people and trying to take as much photography as possible, uh, I then get uh, found by Amy Barton and she says, hey, Paul, um, take the shortcut. And she points to me like, down this secret route and she says, yeah, take the, take the last door and you'll be as close as possible to the stage because the show's just about to start. So. I, like a, like a sneaky cat, decide to do that, and by sneaky cat, I'm not very sneaky at all. So anyway, I quickly, pretty much like run down there before everyone else gets told the same thing. After a few minutes, we see various folks from Intel take to the stage. Lisa Pierce does so, and she explains her reasoning for the decisions of various aspects of the Intel Graphics Command Center, including the fact that we see one-click optimization, we see a greater explanation of all of the different settings and what they do within the, within the menu, and so much more besides. Lisa Pierce takes to the stage and discusses the Intel Graphics Command Center, revealing that it's now available to download and test out and actually provide Intel feedback. She once again pushes the fact that you've got one-click optimization, the fact that uh, you now have a much greater explanation of what, for example, settings do. So, for example, anastropic filtering, MSAA, and so on and so on. I do have to admit, I'm not particularly happy that the only option right now is through Windows Store, but they did appear to be open to the prospect of making it just a standalone download, and please do that, Intel. I think that you would get a much better reception from the community if you were to do it. But the show was really stolen by Raja Kadori when he went on stage. Raja asked a question of the audience. Who here remembers the rotary phone? I, along with many others in the audience, begrudgingly put our hands up, signifying that we were over 30. And he says that right now, that's where he and Intel feels that computer graphics are, the rotary phone. And then he asks us, imagine what we're going to be like in 10 or 15 years from now. It was quite the statement, but no real details of what Intel were planning. Once again, this was clearly just Intel trying to engage with the community and trying to build excitement around their projects. <clears throat> Once again, no details were given though. This is clearly Intel just trying to build excitement of their GPUs and to remind gamers that, hey, Intel do more than just produce CPUs. Intel have, however, released Generation 11 white papers and was also at the Generation 11 GDC conference. There will be a greater analysis of Generation 11 soon, but suffice to say that so far, the GPU, or the iGPU to be more accurate, looks impressive. A low power generation 11 GPU was recently spotted and was on roughly the same performance level as a Vega 8 GPU, which definitely is impressive, at least right now, considering we're looking at early access hardware, it's a low power device, and the drivers are not finished, and so on and so on. That isn't to say, however, that the iGPU is flawless. There are definitely weaknesses. Sitting in GDC Generation 11 introduction, and I spotted that bilinear filtering was recommended in certain situations because of bandwidth constraints. Tile-based rendering doesn't support D3 detessellation or compute shading, and using these will essentially disable tile-based rendering. There were a couple of other things as well, but once again I'll get further in depth with those in the analysis that will be up soon. Now what follows is speculation on my part, but I personally believe that the Intel Generation 11 graphics that we see in the iGPU in Ice Lake is going to be different to what we see in the actual Intel XE discrete graphics. Now, it would not be the first time that Intel have released an iteration of hardware, Generation 9 and Generation 9.5. But there are also other reasons that you can start digging into. For one, Intel have no desire whatsoever to speak of discrete graphics. Plus, as well, at the GDC 2019 conference, they said that some of the flaws that they currently have are things that they're working on, sometimes on the software side, but also for future revisions of the hardware. Not to mention, 
It just makes sense given the time frame. I mean, if you look at the launch date of Ice Lake versus the launch date, the tentative launch date of some point in 2020 of the discrete GPUs, Intel definitely have the time to do some optimizations there. So my personal opinion is that some of this stuff is going to be fixed. We also have another piece of evidence, and that is that uh, we have the Aurora Exascale supercomputer, which is using a variant of Intel XE graphics. From the press statements, we can ascertain that the performance of this GPU is going to be very, 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 very impressive. I'm not going to say it's going to beat NVIDIA. I'm not going to say it's going to beat AMD. I don't have performance numbers. All I can tell you is that they're obviously very confident which possibly tells me that we're going to see an iteration of the architecture. I'm not saying it's going to be generation 12. I instead think it's going to be an improved iteration of the hardware. Intel have also told me that there will likely be future Odyssey events, and they also are very keen to engage with the community. So my personal takeaway on this is that I'm excited for Intel to get into the graphics space, much like I'm excited for Navi to be released, much like I'm excited for 7NM on NVIDIA. I'm a tech enthusiast. I want us to have great products. I want you as a consumer to be able to go to the store and say, hey, I've got 300 or 400 or 200 or whatever your budget is, US dollars, and I want you to be able to get a great product for that. And so I'm excited for Intel to get into the space. Now, I don't know what's gonna be the best product, and honestly, I look forward to testing the hardware because ultimately that's what matters, right? For me to say to you, hey, I think that the best product for your budget, for your usage scenario is this. What I think sucks is that right now we only have Nvidia, ultimately. Whether you've got a 300 US dollar budget or a thousand US dollar budget, ultimately Nvidia have, <laughs> excuse the pun, all of the cards and that sucks. That's not to say that AMD have no good uh, options. Radeon 7 is a pretty capable card, especially if you're doing prosumer level work. But for most people, they would agree that it's not enough to beat the RTX 2080. The RX 580 and 590 are really just not worth it now when you've got the GTX 1660 and 1660 Ti. My point is that if Intel get into the space, hopefully anyway, you will always have two options when you're buying a card rather than so if one company falls behind hopefully the other two will pick up the slack it's going to be really interesting over the next couple of years in technology and i for one am super excited what all companies bring to the table i really hope and i mean this from the bottom of my heart i really hope navi kicks butt um, i'm very excited to see what it's actually capable of and hopefully it makes nvidia sweat some but I'm also super excited to see what Intel can bring to the table as well. This is a company that are not shy about the fact that they have a lot of resources. I was told that there are literally thousands of engineers working on the graphics from Intel. Thousands. That's a great thing for us. So my opinions summarized for the Odyssey is I think it was a great event. It didn't dive super in depth into the architecture, but what it did do is tell us that Intel are here to play, if you excuse the pun. Anyway, before my voice goes completely, I think that's just about it for this particular video. This is certainly not the last I'm gonna be discussing of GDC. There's a lot more I wanna go through, along with the Generation 11 information as a whole, because there is a lot I've learned over the past couple of days. So I wanna break that down for you. With that said though, um, I'd ask you all to comment down below and ask what you really want from Generation 11, along with what you dislike about graphics right now and your issues, because ultimately you being involved in that is only gonna help us as customers, which is something that I'm all for. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.